thank you very much. Um, this, is a, this is quite odd, uh, in part because I've put this slide up um, from the outset. But um, I'm here because uh, last autumn, um, I was going around doing what was largely the same kind of talk um, about um, yeah, being more learner-centered and learner-focused in what we do. And you know, I got over doing the talk, which was apologizing for all the things I did wrong when I was schools minister. And this was you know, moving things forward. And um, I was doing this talk up in St. Andrews in Scotland at the Headmasters Conference, you know, where all the big public schools are, um, the day that Steve Jobs died. And uh, I just threw in a comment, which kind of helped synthesize what I was talking about in terms of a learner-centered approach by saying, well, what what would it have been like if Steve Jobs had done schools rather than computers? You know, and designed education. And um, unfortunately, I then kept that line in the talk. Because then Graham heard the talk and said, oh, can you come and do 20 minutes on that, please? Um, and uh, then foolishly, I said yes. So, uh, so that's why I'm here. And uh, everything that I'm now going to say in response to that, I've completely made up. Uh, and uh, it's just me being a bit fanciful. And, and it was tempting to be really silly about it and say, well, um, you know, Steve Jobs School um, would be a faith-based Zen Buddhist school and um, uh, everyone would have to eat carrots for lunch um, and sort of get into some of the weirdnesses about uh, Steve Jobs. For those of you who've read the really great book, which is my main source material um, that I got for Christmas, um, which uh, I did read on my iPad, although it was on the Kindle app, um, which obviously would have upset uh, Steve. But I never met him, uh, although I do a bit of work for Apple. Um, I just apologize that, you know, this is, this is just a bit of fancy, uh, really. But the focus for me, and what I think is useful about this, is to think about design and think about what happens if you really design public services? You know, I was a, uh, a government minister, as you've heard, for five years. And it was only in my fifth year that anyone externally, and no one never did internally, but then only in my fifth year did someone external come to me and give me something to help me through the meeting where they'd really designed it. They'd really thought about what it was they wanted me to focus on in terms of where they put words on the page, how big the type was, what f type of font it was, how much white space was on the paper. They'd really thought about it. And that was really powerful for me. I thought, that's interesting. What happens if we do design public services? Uh, and I don't mean just about buildings, and you know, thank you for the credit, Stephen, around building schools for the future. Not everyone thinks it was great. I still do. Um, but uh, it, it's more than buildings, and it's more than aesthetics. It is very much about the user. And, uh, you know, what uh, Steve apparently said uh, is there, uh, that, you know, education for him was, you know, the struggle with having to memorize stupid stuff. And we, we need, if we're going to do this, to create something that's much more seductive, much more intuitive. Uh, Stephen showed us uh, a very similar picture of uh, a toddler on an iPad. But it's that intuitive nature of the iPad that's been designed to be seductive and without instructions. You know, I've not had any instructions uh, for this or uh, for my other iOS device, the iPad, and yet I love using it. And occasionally, I find out things that I didn't know it could do because I talked to other users. But that's a great way of me working it out. And I'd love a school that was like that. Um, I'd love a school that thinks about not what is wanted, especially not what is wanted by the Daily Mail, but what is needed. And what is needed to make people really want to learn. And a school that's not designed for the producer so much as for the consumer of the learning. And of course, one that is disruptive and revolutionary of what we've got. Because, you know, in reprising the apology thing, I just say, 
you know, I can reflect back on my time as schools minister and be really proud of a number of different things that I think we managed to do in that time, but I still have to go back and also look at the neat figures. I still have to go back and look at the uh, attainment gap between rich kids and poor kids and say, despite throwing lots of money at it, hiring a load more teachers, great teachers, great leaders, we still didn't do well enough. And I'm left thinking, well, we've tried the current model of school systems um, that pervades, and it works okay for the majority, but it really fails about a third of kids. And we need something disruptive and revolutionary if we're going to succeed to serve those children. Uh, so we're therefore left with how to design the insanely great school, which uh, is the uh, borrowed jobs phrase um, that you know, in the end is what we're after. And you know, a measure of success, perhaps, is uh, Another Jobs quote, yeah, he, he was really bored at school and um, he misbehaved because he was really bored. So maybe a measure of success for our insanely great, slightly fanciful school is that we just design out bad behavior. And that if kids are really misbehaving, we don't exclude the kids. You might exclude the teacher because they've not done a good enough job. But that may, yeah, there's a few teachers in the audience, so I'll, I went dwell on that, um, but you certainly are looking at how you might design out uh, bad behavior. And uh, when you're looking at design, certainly from the, the, the Steve Jobs, Johnny Ive point of view, there is an absolute focus on simplicity and decluttering and taking out all the things that get in the way of providing an, a, a compelling proposition. And I think uh, what I want, want to think about is decluttering the environment in which you learn, the what you learn, the curriculum, uh, the qualifications uh, for what they're worth, and of course the people who are delivering uh, the service. Uh, declutter by starting with the why, uh, not the what or the how, because you know, if I talk to people about schools, um, what goes through everyone's mind is probably where they went to school, but the, the schools that they're familiar with, the classrooms with uh, rows of desks, uh, and you know, what looks fairly familiar now looked uh, fairly familiar 50 years ago. Um, and if I look at that environment, and starting with env that environment, you know, I put up a picture of the Apple retail store in Covent Garden. Um, Apple thought, you know, they decided to do retail. And uh, they decided to do retail differently. And they made it this environment. And it's a completely different retail experience. And it's that disruptive nature that I want from my uh, insanely great school. How does it make me feel when I walk through the door? You know, I don't know how you felt when you walked through the door here in Olympia uh, today and came up the stairs? Um, how do you feel when you walk in uh, to the local school where you work or where you have a relationship? How do I feel when I walk into the House of Lords where you know, it's a little bit bling and uh, the first thing you've got are uh, rows of uh, uh, coat hangers with everybody's name on and it's a bit like going to a public school. Um, uh, and maybe that's been designed or, or maybe it's by accident. Uh, but we need to design in order to people, uh, for people to feel like they want to be there, that it was a good idea to get out from under the duvet this morning, uh, that they want to learn, that they're comfortable, that it responds to them uh, personally as their space. And it's with who and, uh, uh, it, it, and you're with who you want to learn with and who you want to learn from. Uh, and it would, of course, be a simple, beautiful space. I think that's just taken as read. Uh, and I think it's right that first impressions count, um, that uh, they set the mood. Because you know, much as I kind of have an affection for this old place, uh, when you first walk through the door, it's not the 
whizzy, exciting thing that it is when you get up here and you get in amongst Graham's tents and bubbles and um, into this uh, lovely set. Uh, so the tone isn't set for me when I walked in here until I got up into the bit that he'd been able to uh, design. Of course, it would be a flexible space. It would be an interactive social space. And I think it would be accessible all the year round. Stephen talked about his, his daughter's uh, school, Lampton School, in the sort of Heathrow flight path. I visited that uh, class because he uh, thought it would be a good idea, and I'm really glad that I did. And one of the exciting things about that space that was designed by and for the pupils was that they were beating the door down to use it all the way through the Easter holiday, and Julia had to find a way of getting someone in to let them in and carry on using their learning space. Uh, that was, of course, a social space as well. But then it wouldn't just be, the insanely great school is not just a school. It's not just um, buildings. It's about learning. And learning doesn't stop when, you're, when, when the school bell goes and you go home, if you've got a school bell. Um, learning would carry on at home. So learning would be a 24-7 thing. Uh, and uh, you would have everything that goes with that in terms of the relationship with home, uh, with parents, uh, and how children can access their learning materials uh, from home. Then I think about the curriculum. Um, so the questions, the why questions you always start with when you're thinking about, or when I'm thinking about design. Is there a range of things to interest everyone? You know, Sorry, Nick and Michael, but you know, I'm just putting the E back to one side. Um, is there a range of things to interest and engage and entice uh, everybody? Is every module, every class, every course relevant enough to feel real to the learner so that they want to engage with it? Could it be of some practical use? Does it inspire curiosity? And for me, that's the crucial thing, is how we inspire children's curiosity in our insanely great school, using whatever tools we got at our, our disposal to do that. And in order to do that, I think there has to be a fair amount of learner choice. You know, I've been to a great school up in Bolton. You all have heard about the ESSER Academy. They have options days every six months where kids are choosing every six months the different courses um, that they want to do all the way through from year eight uh, until they leave at the age of 16. Um, it would, of course, be stage and not age. And we'll hear from Ken Robinson later on, who uh, nailed it in terms of that argument in his great talk that the RSA have animated. I think it might even be all age. You know, if you're decluttering, do we, I mean, there'd be some safeguarding issues. There are issues but parents may well be welcome in to come and learn too. I don't know. It might be all age. I'm sure it would be enterprising to increase relevance and encouraging kids to take their learning and make something practical and do some trading off the back of it. And it would be creative, technical, theoretical, and practical. But most of all, it would be fun. You know, we've just heard from Anthony about play and game-based learning, uh, and I'm sure we would have a lot of that, and uh, that's what that quote uh, there is all about. So then I'd think about qualifications. And, you know, we got this uh, high-stakes testing system in this country that I um, have my fingerprints all over, uh, and uh, um, maybe we may have got some of that wrong. Because you'd have to say, in the insanely great school, what are the qualifications leading towards? What do they lead to? Do they lead to more interesting, exciting learning, more curiosity? Or do they just lead to more qualifications? And who are they serving? Are they serving the minister in sanctuary buildings? Are they serving the head teacher? Are they serving the local paper who wants to print um, tables? Or are they serving the learner? And then you get into a sort of fundamental design question, which you know, is one of the things that set uh, Apple apart, I think, 
which was whether it's a, how much is it a closed system or an open system? And obviously, uh, Apple famously went with quite a closed system. Um, and I do think you would be frustrated. I've spoken to many head teachers of secondary schools who get, who get frustrated that they're not doing the primary bit as well because you know, they inherit uh, whatever was done at primary. And I think this would be an all through school. I think it would probably be all through, all the way through into higher education. Um, so that you can design the whole thing. And Stephen and I have been working on a, an academy which we hope to be certainly way, all the way through to 21 uh, up on Portland uh, in Dorset. There would be testing when ready. I think there would be open enrollment on a sort of take it or leave it basis if you don't like being in the insanely great school, then just go and find another one. Um, uh, I'm not fussed. Um, and it would certainly be skills-based, not just knowledge-based. And then, I haven't really talked about technology, because uh, I didn't really feel like I needed to too much, um, because I think you probably all get it, and you've been talking about it for a couple of days. Uh, but uh, across the design about the environment, the design of the curriculum, the design of qualifications, there would be effective use of uh, technology. I think there would be interactive services uh, as far as you could get, get them. Um, there would, of course, be e-books, e-textbooks, um, and less backache. And, you know, Michael Gove, if you're listening, watching it online, uh, as I'm sure he is from Sanctuary Buildings, um, no, you've blocked him. Good. Okay, fine. Um, then, yeah, why wouldn't you have Dostoevsky, Conrad, Pope? Yeah, he likes Pope, Shakespeare. You know, the whole of the English literary canon in your backpack, just there for you. Why wouldn't you? Um, so you would. Uh, the technology would be there uh, working for you, working for your learner. So every child a browser, every child a researcher, every child a co-creator. Uh, with online lecturing, one-to-one -one tuition, adaptive assessment, webinars, uh, blogging for literacy, all things that I've seen working really well in different learning environments uh, uh, in this country. I can't uh, have the pretensions to globetrotting that uh, my friend Stephen Heppel does um, to wow you with examples from Australia and, uh, and around and about. Um, and then the people. This is perhaps the less attractive side of um, uh, jobs. Uh, if you are a trade unionist, um, you might not like some of this. Um, but he, of course, was passionate about the need for A-grade people. And the A-grade people don't like working with B-grade people. And so you get rid of the B-grade people to make sure that the, th the, th the service for the user is as good as possible. And uh, yes, the teachers would be excellent. I think we've got the best generation of teachers we've ever had in this country, so I'm pretty relaxed about that. Um, but uh, the teaching would have to be excellent if the school was insanely great. But I also think that pupils would be teaching other pupils. Uh, I think uh, that parents would have to be involved too, because in the end, You'd want to be able to design the whole system and design what happens at home as well as at school. And it just makes sense that you would engage uh, parents alongside teachers. Uh, and so you'd have challenging leaders. You'd have an intolerance of poor performance. You would have respect for the authority of the teacher and the leader. Um, there's no doubt that that, was, that is part of the culture that I come across when I go uh, to Apple. Um, but it's truly collaborative and truly uh, inclusive. So, in summary, if, in my sort of fanciful little notion, uh, doing the commission that Graham set me um, to, to talk about an insanely great school, if he was going to do it, he'd do it properly and completely. It would be designed, it would be beautiful, it would be all-encompassing. And it would certainly be about learning and not teaching, about real achievement, not qualifications. Technology, but only where it works for great teachers stimulating learning. And he would, of course, have been a lousy head teacher. But the Apple School 
would invent the future by being insanely great. Thank you all very much.